Hey there, it's uh, Aaron. It is November 16th, 2014, and I thought I'd make a video. You haven't, or you can't tell. I'm using uh, Cyberlink UCAM again, because uh, while it was much easier to use uh, the Windows uh, Movie Maker to record the video, uh, there were a lot of negatives. One, the two sides of the screen were cut off, which didn't really bug me. But when I looked back at it a while ago, the quality was uh, like 240p. That's not good. I mean, 240p is a pretty low quality, but uh, yeah, I like making high quality stuff. So I'm going back to uh, using UCAM. These are all things that I want to like, get for some time now. Uh, the first two things. Uh, that came out. Uh, it's about November fourth. I found them at my local record store uh, days before that, and um, those two things I'm talking about are Venus and Mars by Paul McCartney and Wings, and Wings at the Speed of Sound by Paul McCartney and Wings, remastered. And uh, with the second disc, Venus and Mars is one of my favorites by Paul. Uh, I think right behind, in terms of Wings albums, I think right behind Ben on the Run. This would be number two. Number three for me would be uh, Back to the Egg. That's a really good one. I really like Back to the Egg. I have a soft spot for that one. And um, I mean, comparing it to the uh, final, which I got not too long ago on uh, over in New Jersey somewhere I live in Jersey further in Jersey where my grandmother lived. we went we took a family trip there uh, comparing it to the vinyl I got there I mean this is this thing here is sort of a poster I think that that's where the uh, the vinyl was kept so it's the same deal that you get for the other reissues in the series um, there you have the main disc with the the original album, and then you get the second disc, which has bonus audio, uh, and they really give you a lot of bonus audio. Some of them have been released before, but um, uh, six of these, uh, three of them have been on uh, previous reissues of Wings at the Speed of Sound. But uh, the bonus audio, while it can be boring out for a while, uh, it should be good for completists. Uh, you get a new version of uh, My Carnival, another mix of Hey Diddle, Let's Love, 4th of July, another version of Rock Show, the single edit of Let It Go, Letting Go, Soily from uh, One Hand Clapping. Yeah. So it, they really give you a lot because with the, my complaint with the other bonus discs in the series is that they don't give you enough. In this one, they give you 50 minutes. Even though part of that 50 minutes has already been released, but still, it's an improvement. We're we're going somewhere here. What MPL Concord and hear music? Yeah, we're getting somewhere here. The booklet is filled with the lyrics and minor notes and stuff like that. You get the picture there. Uh, I've owned a copy of this, and it's uh, from 1987. Uh, the cover of which Paul signed when I met him. That's another story in itself. And Denny signed, Denny Lane signed it as well. And um, now compared to that version, uh, the CD version, of the CD that's in there, this is a lot better. The quality is superb on this remaster. Uh, highly recommended. Uh, I think it goes for $15. So, yeah. And uh, if you haven't noticed here, this is what's coming next in the Paul McCartney archives. Uh, Tug of War and Pipes of Peace. Tug of War, good album, Pipes of Peace. No. Okay, Wings at the Speed of Sound uh, was the one that came afterwards. This album is a bit of a mixed bag for me, and I think for a lot of other people when around the time it came out, even though it was a big seller, it was a pretty big disappointment that there were really way too many soft rock songs on here it just doesn't seem heavy the new remaster however 
I think I have a whole new appreciation for this album. I mean, I still think it's a pretty weak album, but um, the songs on it are good. I mean, there's what, Money Man, so we love songs. Uh, Beware My Love, Wino Junko from Jimmy McCulloch. Duh. Yeah. The second disc only has 21 minutes of material. I am not joking you. 21 minutes. Ouch. That's not a lot. You get the booklet too. Oh, and on the bonus disc you get um, John Bonham uh, drumming on a, another take of Beware My Love. But, uh, is it worth it? Yeah, sure. I mean, I got them both at the same time. If you want to get, if you don't have the money to get both, I mean, together they cost me about a little over $30. So, if you want to get one and then get the other later, that's, that's perfectly fine. But, uh, yeah. Well worth getting if you're a McCartney fan. All right. Okay, the next two items I got... If it, you probably already saw them in the back, didn't you? Uh, the other two I have here are were the released uh, last week. One of them being the new Pink Floyd album, The Endless River. Now the reason why I use the air quotes is because uh, most of this album was recorded back in 93 when they were recording The Division Bell, which was then their last album. But uh, David Gilmour, Nick Mason, Roger Waters has nothing to do with this album. Uh, David and Nick, uh, they decided to go into the studio, take the sessions of this for this album, which was called The Big Spliff, and it wasn't supposed to be a Pink Floyd album. But they thought it was good enough, so they, re they recorded new instrument tracks on the album to make I guess to make it sound more Pink Floyd like because the original product was more ambient uh, experimental stuff which Pink Floyd are known for actually but uh, I don't think uh, the typical Pink Floyd fan I mean, not the typical Pink Floyd I think the general or the casual music listener is gonna listen to that and go that's Pink Floyd but this one it does sound like them, but at the same time, I feel like I'm in a spa retreatment center or what. You know, I feel like I'm going to get a massage. <laughs> but is it bad? No. Is it a classic? Not at all. Uh, it's good. And the album is entirely instrumental with the exception of one track, Louder Than Words. Good song. But did this need to be released? No. Uh, but... At least Pink Floyd now have some closure. I mean, there really wasn't any closure with a division bell, even though I think that would have closed out their career fine. But, uh, this is okay. All right, the next one's a DVD, uh, Feast of Friends, The Doors. This is a long lost documentary that was made by The Doors about The Doors. Uh, about a 48 minute documentary that they tried to make during their 1968 tour and it's a little bit of a disappointment I mean the movie had been they made it in 1968 and then 1970 the doors tried help putting it together uh, Jim coming from a film background where he met Ray in UCLA um, the film their filming school uh, they made this 40 some minute documentary just of 8 millimeter footage or 16 millimeter footage of the band performing and then playing the studio tracks above it. And a lot of the footage that you see in the movie has been used in previous doors home video releases. Now, what makes it stand out more is that they found a whole bunch of other stuff that hasn't been released. And they call that Feast of Friends Encore. And it's about 30 minutes, and they give you more on that. The extra footage makes this worth the purchase. And they also throw in some other stuff. The Doors Are Open, a British documentary from 1968, which has performance of them uh, playing at the London's Roadhouse. 
which I think has been released before. But uh, the documentary itself, no. And then a performance at the end, which I have yet to uh, watch. And it comes with a booklet with uh, essays and other things there. Okay, uh, the next two things here I got back to back. These are not new in any way. Uh, one of them I got from iTunes, which I'm going to show you on my phone here. Now, I don't listen to this on my phone. I'm just saying that I got it from iTunes. Vandergraph Generator. Uh, Pawn Hearts. Great album. I've only listened to it twice, though, uh, but for what it is, it's good. Uh, I've heard a lot of great things about these guys. It's a good album. And the other one I got uh, from Amazon. Uh, Burn, Deep Purple, the first down with David Coverdale and uh, Glenn Hughes. Great album. And that's about it. Uh, not too much left of the year, so um, I don't know what else I'm going to get. But uh, I know ACDC's new album is, is coming out, and uh, I can't think of anything else uh, that's coming out. For the end of the year. So, yeah, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.